For the last time for the T20 World Cup in 2024, this is the World Cup Daily with Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon for Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City, more extra, less ordinary. What an extraordinary decider, Jeff. Sum it up to start in 30 seconds. Go. In 30 seconds, India looked sunk when they were three down for 34. Then Virat Kohli and Akshar Patel up the order, put on a partnership of 70-something enough, uh, and Shivam Dubey comes in and launches some bombs. Kohli goes big at the end. They get up to 176 for seven. It felt steep. It was steep. It was steeper when South Africa lost two quickly. But then there were partnerships through the middle. Quentin de Kock, Tristan Stubbs, Heinrich Klasser makes the fastest for 50 in a T20 World Cup final. David Miller makes some at the end, and then they absolutely botch it. They needed 30 off the last five overs, and they didn't get them. 169 for eight. India win maybe slightly more than 30 but I think you can forgive that on a day like today Jesus Christ that turnaround at the end uh, that was South Africa's game that was South Africa's game all the way and India somehow Bumrah Pandya um, Ashdeep somehow made it somehow turned it around yeah they needed 30 from 30 with six wickets in hand and that that equation narrowed yet further with Bumrah bowling that over uh, they, they ended up falling uh, so so close but so yet so far yet so close and all the rest of it to lose by seven runs and you know yep. you look at the scorecard it'll it'll be deceptive because it looks like they had it won but just want to make one point off the top here about the idea of choking and the idea of succumbing to pressure which the analysis will give that impression and to an extent of course they did right they were chasing in a world cup final needed to hold their nerve david miller who ended up falling uh, right at the very end, the last ball of the final over. And by that stage, I needed 16 from the 20th, which would have seemed inconceivable when they needed, I think it was 24 from 21 27 or something off 27. like that. When the, mini- the, the point when, the point off when Klaassen gets but, out, yeah. Yeah, just on this idea of choking, though, which I, I'm sure we're going to see it everywhere, and that's okay. I, I understand that. I'm not being hugely critical of it. But my perspective would be that they were only ever one wicket away from subjecting their bowlers to needing to do something quite significant. Now, you know, when the cock gets out, which is the ball after hitting the boundary, then the fielder moves, puts it down his throat, all the rest of it, I'd see that as a more culpable act than Janssen and Maharaj and Rabada not being able to do it with Miller at the end. They've got the three finishers in position, but they're at five, six, and seven. Ideally, they'd be at six, seven, and eight, if you know what I'm trying to say. They're, they're batting one position too high, in order to have the depth you would want in a chase like that where wickets have fallen early, thanks to Jasbit Boomer, who bowled an extraordinary delivery to get rid of Hendricks. And then uh, the second wicket falling so soon thereafter with Adrian Aiden Markram chasing one off Ashdeep Singh. So the, just the, the idea of choking, yeah, I get it, but structurally mm. they were set up to make it bloody difficult if they ever got to a situation just like this, and they did, and they paid for it. That, that was the thing. That was the aspect of it. And in the past, I've, I've disagreed with people throwing the chokers thing around too much against South Africa. I think you, you put this down here to two... To a, there are a couple of different factors. One, Jasper Boomer is a fucking genius, like just yeah. straight off the top. And the fact that India had to go back to him earlier than they normally would, that was a massive mm. gamble because basically the game was gone. Rohit Sharma recognised if, if Boomer doesn't do something special here, the game has, has eluded us. Boomer bowls... So they've got five overs to go. Boomer bowls one that goes for four runs so that that already you know shifts the equation just that little bit it's not quite a runner ball then Hardik Pandya bowls three balls they get three singles uh, sorry Hardik Pandya bowls a couple of balls Rishabh Pant has the the long um, yeah. injury timeout for his knee and then Klaassen nicks off slower ball wide outside off stump chases it and nicks it when he's on 52 from 20 something deliveries so but even at that point, I felt like, okay, South Africa should still be able to knock the ball around. The thing is, you've got five overs to score 30, but two of those are Boomer overs. So probably you need 22 off 18, realistically, you know, and then maybe you try to get four off, the, four off each of the two Boomer overs. So you knew that it wasn't going to be completely simple with Boomer there. But I still think it is. I think, I think this is a choke in that you should be able to knock the ball around at that point and find a way to do it. And particularly the single that they took uh, for Maharaj at the end of the Boomer over, the second over, after yeah. he's gone through, he goes through Janssen. He bowls an absolute screamer. It's fast. It's angled in. It jags off the pitch. It's so far through the gate. Janssen's nowhere near it. He's no prayer of hitting that ball. Takes his leg stump out. Um, and you can tell that all the South African stomachs are clenching. But why in blazing hell with David Miller at the other end and batting pretty nicely by that point because Miller had got them into a good position even before class and destroyed Akshar Patel in, in that massive over why would Miller agree to give up the strike because then Maharaj is on strike for Ashdeep Singh and Ashdeep Singh's over uh, goes dot 
dot one before Miller gets back on strike. Miller scores a two, then takes a single, then there's another dot ball. That's the over that loses them the game, I reckon, yeah. because if David Miller's actually backing himself fully and if he's not playing nervous, he says, we're not taking that one. Trust me, leave it to me. I will get this done at the other end um, and I will take down the junior member of the Indian seam attack in this over and make it easier for us in the other ones that are yet to come. That's what they don't do and that's why I reckon it is a bottle. Yeah, and just on, just to come back to one of the points you made there, Boomer bowls over number 16 and they handle it yep. quite well because they've hit yep. the stage where, like, Boomer ends up with two for 18. We could have written that on the back of a coaster before the... Well, they, we did. I think we said something like that in our preview, didn't we? 24 hours ago yep. that Boomer going for about 18 meant that you've got two fewer overs in your chase, right? But they handled yep. that one especially well. That's the over after they go absolutely nuts against Akshar Patel, who ends up conceding 49 runs in his four overs and we're at that stage with class, and we've seen him in this mode before in the 50-over World Cup last year, of course, in domestic cricket around the world, where when he is on one, he's as unstoppable as anyone, with perhaps the exception of, say, Glenn Maxwell on his day. He's in that same category of, where the fuck yep. do you bowl to this guy? He can hit any yep. ball anywhere. I'm not saying that they're the two best players in the world. I'm saying that the two most difficult players to bowl to in circumstances like yep. that. And he was having one of those days, you know, five, sixes, but the previous over was just defensive batting, right? And it did look like, for all money, in that 15th over, like they were going to cruise to victory. But so long as those two were there. And getting through the Boomer over was absolutely essential. That's what made all the by play with the Richard Punt taking time out of the game. This was picked up on the television commentary. They needed to suck any momentum, anything they could. I'm not for a mm. second questioning the integrity of Richard Punt, but bloody hell. Great timing going down for two minutes right there at the end of the Boomer <laughs> over. Ne it wasn't two balls later, Jeff. It was next ball. It was the next ball yeah. from Hardik Pandya, the wider, slower, tempter, class and nicks off. And I've got to say, from my vantage point watching it on television, I'm like, this is already game on. I immediately thought, with Janssen walking out there, yes, he held his nerve against the West Indies chasing 115. Different story when you've still got 20-something to go. Now, more than a runner ball, which was fine, by the way. I, I, I think it was a a reasonable thing to not bother about scoring against Boomer. Yeah, you had one more over to come thereafter, mm. but w your, your point was correct that they had to get the runs elsewhere. But with Janssen being the new man walking in, Miller wasn't completely set. He never really was, but he wasn't the set man in that partnership. That was all class and heavy lifting when he really teed off between overs 10 and 15 and broke the back of the chase. So, yeah, it was fascinating to watch that whole thing play out. And once they got one, you know, the classic one brings two, and then you're into the bowlers, and then you're into the point where, or you're up to the point where um, India were able to do exactly what they did to Pakistan. Mm. There was a template here. They, they did this a few weeks ago. We were there, Jeff, at New York. We saw them do just this uh, to Pakistan, and they've, they've repeated the dose when it matters most against South Africa, who will be gutted with it, but there are reasons along the way. Truly extraordinary when you need 30 off 30 to end up getting 22 of them, I think, off, mm. off the full 30 deliveries. Um, extraordinary the, the way they were able to clamp down. And particularly after it was such a good comeback from South Africa, because when the first two go early, obviously Reza Hendricks yeah, doesn't make much difference either way. He's done bugger all play in that. the tournament. The only thi but still, yeah, we'll play, play that, that, right? Like, good luck. Yeah. Yeah, no one's playing. No, no, sure, no one's no one's playing the ball that got him out. But also, he, it's yeah. not like he's been contributing anyway. So that, I didn't see that right. as a huge loss. He he had one nice square drive for four and and looked decent for about thirty seconds, and that was it. And then you've got Markram, who has looked good at times, chasing a wide one. Um, he nicks that one behind after also hitting a four first ball. By the way, I mean they took eight off Boomer in the fourth over, and even that seemed like quite a bit off Jasper Boomer. Mm. But then the way that they pull things together with with Stubbs batting really well initially um, with Quentin de Kock. And, and they start, they're being tempered with their aggression. You know, Quentin de Kock goes over cover. Um, Stubbs plays the cut shot well when Akshar's bowling. And then they take on Cool Deep as well. Um, they're playing the cut when he drops short. Um, there's the big slog sweep that Tristan Stubbs pulls out as well against Akshar Patel. A and then takes on Cool Deep, hits him for a straight four. Quentin de Kock sweeps him for a six. Um, and then Stubbs sweeps a six off Akshar Patel. So consecutive sixes for South Africa. Yeah. Last ball of one over, first ball of the next. And they're looking really good at this stage. The, the partnership's 58 off 38, and then Stubbs jumps outside his off stump, tries a big sweep, misses it, uh, and gets bowled. So 70 for three in the ninth over, which means they still need 106 off 66 balls. That's a very tough ask. But Klaassen is 
unbelievable through that next period. Tempered aggression initially, he hits like one six in each over, basically from that point on. One off Pandya, yeah. um, that crazy, that shot over cover that was just absurd, a sort of extra cover drive for six. The straight six off Jadeja, and then that cut shot off Kuldeep over cover for six. Yeah. Again, ridiculous, ridiculous batting, right? And so, you know, suddenly the required thing is 76 off 48. And you're like, okay, well, that's a bit closer. Um, and then you've got Quinton de Kock with what you mentioned where he flicks one over fine leg. They move the field around to deep fine and he plays the same shot and gets caught by cool deep. They need 71 off 45 at that point. And then Miller, after cool deep's bowled a quiet first four balls, gets 10 off two, four and a six, cut and a pull. Um, and then Klaassen takes down Akshar Patel, 24 off the over, two wides, 22 off the bat of Klaassen, three of them straight down the ground, one onto the roof of the Garfield Sober stand. And that's the, that's the point where you're like, bloody hell, like South Africa are going to win this because Klaassen is rip-roaring. He's destroyed their spinners. And that was, that was point number one that South Africa had to do today was take down their spinners. They took down Kuldeep, who didn't take a wicket and went for 10 and over. And they took down Akshar, who went at 10 and over as well. So uh, having yeah. done all that work, that's why I think this... That, that's why I do regard this more critically than just facing some good bowling because South Africa had the ascendancy. They, were, they, were, they had managed the chase so well to that point and all they had to do was finish it. Um, and, you know, India's quality of death bowling was, was too good, but South Africa had gotten their own way as well. Yeah, no doubt. They, they did everything right from being... You know, 12 for 2 when Markram goes, I put something up on Twitter like, what's the over-under here on what over South Africa are bowled out in? Like, over 14? <laughs> well, I genuinely thought that was the... Yeah, totally. But Same. they did... But they, but, you know, but the way they played cool deep was, I think, uh, it was reflective of the way they played full stop from that point. It's as though Stubbs, first of all, and then Decock subsequently stumbled on the realization that unless we really go at this, we're fucked anyway. And sometimes yep. that that liberation point can really help in a short form chase. Clarity. Cool deep never, yeah, exactly. That's a better way of putting it. So, cool deep at no point through the tournament went wicketless and that never went for more runs than this. So big tick there. Akshar yep. Patel, yes, I know that he gets the wicket of Stubbs eventually when he misses that sweep, but Akshar, very expensive, more expensive after he takes the wicket. Um, mm. You know, Ravindra Jadeja only called upon the bowl one over, and 12 were taken Which from that, including 12, yeah. that dominant straight six where you're thinking this is the kind of moment that will be an emblem of mm. the victory, you know. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, just to come back to my previous point, if they had their time again, um, they, they might have structurally, when thinking about this tournament, had a little bit more insulation. Because mm. what Marco Janssen is, superb young cricketer, he might well be, uh, and, and obviously a bowler first and a, and, a, and a contributor with the bat second. I wouldn't call him a bowling or rounder. I call him, a, in this form of the game, a bowler who can do nice things with the bat. India, by contrast, have the flexibility of going, right, we're in early trouble, are we? Akshar Patel, go up to number five and do a job. And that's always been that wild card. They did that in the India in the Pakistan game. My apologies earlier in the tournament. You want to go back to India's batting innings. It was Akshar who made the running. 47 from 31, four sixes for him, just to keep them within striking distance. Because you know, at one stage, South Africa in their chase were 25 runs ahead of where India were in the first innings. That can be a little bit deceptive when you're looking at the two scores side by side, but. And I know that they did lose early wickets when Surya Kumar Yadav was dismissed. It was three down inside the fifth over, albeit with 34 runs on the board because they, they did get some runs early on before Rohit fell and then Punt quickly and then Surya Kumar quickly, Kohli down the other end. But still, they took an awfully long time to flick into gear. To be blunt, it took Kohli until reaching his 50th run. Yeah, he was 49 from 47. He was a prime yeah. candidate to be retired out with 19 or 20 balls to go. <laughs> Coley, by the way, was named player of the match and he has announced his T20 international retirement on the ground after receiving that award. I think Boomer is player of the match for what it's worth, but nevertheless, Coley, top scorer, it normally goes to the person who makes the most runs in a T20. We know that and Coley and all the other associated bits and pieces with him. But 76 from 59, the, the majority of that uh, increased strike rate, which gets to 128, is after he passes 50. There's a long period of time between overs, say, 12 and 17, when getting bowled out was no longer a concern. And they've got the depth. They've got Hardik Pandya, who only faced two balls. They've got Ravindra Jadeja, only faced two balls as well. Uh, Shivam Dubey did his job for the first time, really, I think, in the tournament, 27 from 16 with three boundaries and a six. But it was Akshar, not Kohli, who was making sure that, you know, 180 yeah. was within striking distance. He was the yeah. flexibility. He was the balancing mechanism. And just to come full circle on my point, 
South Africa didn't have that on the other side of the ledger when they were batting. When they get five down, it's a very different equation. Totally. There was always that thought that, you know, Marco Janssen at seven is like like the ghost of Christmas future or something. There's always this spectre down the order where you're like, ooh, he's going to be in soon and he's a little bit too high. Yeah. Um, and we're not 100% convinced that he should be there, even though he did finish off the West Indies chase with the bat. But that point, uh, it was a classic thing of Coley switching modes, right? Because uh, mm. Janssen bowls a very poor first over. He overpitches three times and Coley's batting gorgeously. First ball he faces, square drive through backward point for four. Um, um, he gets the clip of his pads just in front of square leg for four, and then he drives the, the straight drive down the ground that Norkio spills into the rope, um, trying to slide and tap it back. So Coley's going at a strike rate of 300 and something after the first over, um, which comes back to about 106 by the time he's yeah he was 48 off he was 50 off 48 when he brought up the half century. Yeah. So it was like the and that classic. was with and that was with not, and that was with 18 balls to go in the. Yep. I think I'm right in yep. saying 18 balls to go in the inning. So, like, yep. I, I know the 18th over, he has an absolute beauty against Rabada. I just want to clarify, yep. there is some nuance here. He did the right thing by pulling back a gear when losing the three wickets. I'm not disputing that at all. Yep. Where I take exception, if you like, it's probably too harsh a term, but where I think there's criticism to be had and to be levelled is that when the jeopardy had moved on, like where India's depth, India's strength is their depth, right? We always talk about yep. how they bat so deep. They've got so many six hitters down the list. He didn't really need to be there uh, playing the way he was playing from over mm. 12 or 13 onwards. I know he makes up for it yep. in one over and one over only, but taken as a whole, the job that he needed to do, the patch-up job was done. He should have been playing in the way he played in over number 18 and over number 13. Then, you know, 190, 200 is a reality for India. I, I see it a bit differently in that he was able to do what he did because Aksha batted so well and because Dubey came in and batted really aggressively. So that let Coley... I mean, at the point that they're three down, that's that's really wobbly, right? Because Rohit Sharma has been bossing it for the last couple of games. Um, yep. he, he's, he's gone early. You've got Maharaja comes in and bowls the second over. So the first two balls of it go for four. So you've got 15 off Janssen's first and then eight off the first two balls of the second, which is whatever that is, 23 off the first eight balls they're flying um, and then Rowett plays the sweep shot he's caught at square leg class and takes a good catch Rishabh plays a sweep a couple of balls later and toe ends it to the keeper Rabada bowls a tidy over Maharaj bowls a tidy over and then Rabada gets Surya Kumar flicking that catch away to sort of deep backwards square leg where it's class and again so the three they, they were shaking at that point and they were worried at that point that like oh shit you know we, we might bugger this up we might yeah. get bowled out cheaply so Coley Coley's slowing things down a bit he hits a boundary in the fourth and he doesn't hit another boundary until that six that he hits in the 18th true mm. but he did have Akshar coming out who hit a couple of long bombs over mid wicket and scored at a good strike rate I mean Akshar maybe is the player of the match for me more than more than Coley more than I mean you know Boomer is a good shout but Boomer in is, terms yeah. of the bat yeah. Akshar's the one who saves the innings really Coley does a job that we know that Coley can do which is I'm just going to set myself and bat through as far as I can um, Akshar ends up almost making a half century which is wild for a guy who was batting at eight in the previous game and he's his spinner coming up the order yep. um, and then when he's gone you know Dubey's able to, to do what he's able to do which is pound a couple of long ones and, and smoke a couple of straight drives and, and, and whatever it is so I thought I I was reasonably comfortable with the Coley pacing because there was a point where he was going to go and either get himself out or um, or hit a few. Uh, just for the sake of the discourse, I'm glad that he hit a few because, my God, imagine how the um, the angry Coley internet would have lit up if he was out for 50 or 48. Um, it would have been absolute carnage. Well, you know, I, did, I, 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 think, I think my point was more that, my point, was, I guess, was more that, yeah, he takes off, at, off a, a poor rebutter over, by the way. He fed him in that over, the ball on the shoulder yeah. and the ball. That, that was there to be hit in the slot. It's the only pour over that Rabada bowled, I think. He was, well, I know he goes for 36, but I felt like Rabada was getting a lot right, but gets torn apart in that one over. Also picked up the wicket along the way of SKY. So, you know, South Africa's loss and Rabada aren't, um, aren't correlating. Well, by that, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not because Rabada didn't take a hat full of wickets that didn't win the World Cup. Um, I guess it was more to do with the fact that with T20, whenever you speak to analysts or whatever it's about, the distribution of resources and if you said before the game that um, I India would be seven down and would only have two balls from Pandya and two balls from Jadeja you would say well hang on that doesn't quite tally you'd, you'd mm. want to have more of an opportunity for your finishers to finish but anyway it's a, yeah. it's, a it's an academic argument because they've won and Coley's player of the match and everyone will celebrate that and the the tears after the game that you've witnessed Jeff and that's terrific but I don't think it was worth completely washing over the fact that that could have no. definitely gone either way and could have gone um, wrong could have gone wrong the, I 
I, I guess had yeah. he been out earlier, then he would have just given Hardik and, and Jadeja more balls to face. More you know, had he had he gone yeah. out before he accelerated, but but yeah, there would have he would have left them less than he might have done if he decided to go earlier. It, it was it was a bit of a tightrope walk, and the the significance of the Surya Kumar wicket, by the way, just just looking at some numbers of him versus South Africa in this format before today, he'd taken sixty nine off forty three balls against Maharaj. 31 off 18 against Nokia and 39 off 13 against Rabada and never been out to any of them. So the fact that they got him for three, that was that just felt like the biggest wicket of the day, really, until Klaassen um, towards the end. But that was that was the thing where yeah. you thought South Africa might really limit India here to 120 or 130 or something, um, but they just weren't able to do it, those, those partnerships built. Yeah, and just on the start of the India bit, I know in the preview I talked about the idea of a decapitation event and South Africa having the tools to to take out India properly. Like, I feel did. like they'll, it was one wicket away, wasn't it? Yeah. It yeah. feels like one wicket away and they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, in the Oval Office or whatever, if you want to continue this um, <laughs> tortured analogy. Um, you know, they're in there, uh, uh, um, coup d'etat type stuff. But no, they were the, was, they were the Francis again, Underwood of uh, of the T Twenty World Cup final. They would have found a way all that. to so get into the chair. They, yeah. they were they were ever so close to having to having that opportunity, but you know, the three down instead of four down, it just meant that they were were able to rebuild and able to use Akshar uh, in in the perfect way. And you know, Boomer in response or in reply, that ball that he bowled uh, to knock over Hendricks. I mean. It's he bowled a worldly, wasn't it? Was it to get rid of Smith or Warner in the final last year? I can't remember anymore. Whoever it was early on, there was one sensational delivery. So mm. there were these similarities you could detect, you know, for for Head C. Clarsen, right? And he was going to be the guy who would bat through in a yeah. similar kind of way where everything was going right. So that moment with Boomer, I can't get over how important that was, you know, knowing that they had gotten through that 16th over, having had that pressure release with the Akshar over, but the long delay and the 26 from 23 and can Marco do it again? You know, this this will go down, this will be studied. This 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 match yep. will be by analysts and aficionados and people who know an, an awful lot more about the tactical side of T20 than we've ever professed that we know because we come from a slightly different tradition in the game, it's reasonable to say. They will study this uh, mm. and they will draw theories on it about the way in which teams have responded to, to matchups and pressure and and, and a, a great pitch, I must say. I think in the circumstances we've been critical at times of the conditions in this tournament. Well, this was this was perfect. This was competitive for both bat and ball, uh, yep. and it'll go down. I think, although I can, I'm struggling to think of an alternative. This will go down as the greatest World Cup T20 final so far in India. Being able to do it, having been so close over the last decade, having had the best T20 side on paper for such a long stretch of time, not being able to realise that potential, getting there in Kohli's last T20. This will be seen as just as important as the T20 final that India won all the way back when the IPL uh, started as a direct consequence of it. For South Africa, getting to a final, having to wait so long to make one of these and being in the driving seat so deep into the game, you know, three quarters plus of the way through the chase only to fall seven Mm. runs short. They'll be just as gutted as India are related, and you know that's why this kind of game, like great finals, get talked about forever. And I think that's 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 the, that's how this felt to me. I reckon it's time for our break, and then our Hall of Fame. Final word: T Twenty World Cup Daily Day Twenty Nine and Final, the last one, the last time we'll be doing this. Uh, you just came back from Westfield. You were you were at the live watch along party at Westfield London. Got got any uh, got any Westfield info for us? All I'll say is that I'm, I'm hugely grateful to Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City for supporting what we do and especially for having the idea of the watch along party, stack of final word listeners, bunch of them we've met before, a few new people as well, South Africa fans, India fans, neutrals, the works, it was the, the perfect dynamic for it. They threw some money behind the bar, we got some drinks in, some pizzas in. It was a lovely afternoon and great to spend people time with people that we've um, grown so fond of over the time and most of them are are patrons as well and, and that's a big part of the, the story on the final word as well so Westfield London Westfield Stratford City more extra less ordinary support them uh, download their app we'll be talking heaps more about them throughout the course of the English international summer which continues with test cricket in a couple of weeks and on and on it goes with our daily shows our weekly shows our weekend shows our interviews our book clubs our everything Westfield are aligned with all of it throughout the course of 2024 and we thank them for it uh, and uh, yes in terms of final word Hall of Fame moments Jeff we should start with you given you're at the ground 
Yes, well, just a few things from the game itself. Um, Shivam Dubey almost killing David Miller with um, the ball that eventually got him out. <laughs> he smoked it down the ground, yeah. and Miller came in because he thought it was going to fall short, and then it nearly took his head off, and he had to go fingers pointing up while he was falling over backwards, trying to avoid um, being, wearing it in the teeth. Um, the Coley 50 or 48 bit I, I mentioned earlier would have been funny um, had that had that borne out but for all the people who were dropping Coley and, and Dubey before the final they made 103 of India's runs today so hmm, that worked out um, Rishabh Pant reviewing or not reviewing but refusing to leave the field after that toe ended sweep and then the umpires went upstairs to review it and it was just the most obvious top edge you've ever seen no deflection no glove no bump ball he just he just lobbed it up to the wicket keeper off the toe um, and I thought Coley hitting that that big six off a length from Rabada that landed on the roof of the Garfield Sobers stand I thought that was a nice sort of coming together of a mm. couple of the big names and Sobers was here today as well he was milling around out in the middle during the um, the presentation ceremony but yeah Coley landing one on, on Gary's roof seemed like a nice um, twinning of a, a couple of great cricketers just wanted to note, I, I don't think we've mentioned Surya Kumar Yadav's catch in the last over. It did feel like the game oh, was God. over, Jeff, in the 20th. How did we not, how did we uh, not mention but, that? Um, <laughs> that kind of pressure. I mean, look, the reality is uh, Indra winning that game from there under almost any circumstances, I would say, anyway. But the yeah, fact but that if it's that Miller, carries, 10 off 5, that carries. True, it was so true, close. True. It was so close. In fact, I, it was, I guess you're it's, right. It's, it's more about whether it carries. We're derelict in our duty ball. that. Than, that we didn't mention it because Jesus Christ that that I mean 16 off the last and that is going and that was that could be a Hall of Fame because from our commentary position we were right above it we were peering out over the window with like a bird's eye view into the hands of Surya Kumar so we could see we were the first ones to know it was a clean catch because we could see his feet and the gap to the boundary rope which you couldn't see on the ground level cameras they were using but from top down you could see he had he had an inch of green space next to his shoes the whole way along Jesus Christ, holding that catch under pressure, holding that, if that, that goes over, they need 10 off five, that's Miller, that's two good shots for Miller out of five balls, reasonable chance he can do that, and the fact that SKY is able to hang on to that after having a shit day with the bat is, is just unbelievable, like that is, he probably was anyway, but that's him sorted for the rest of his life, as far as like love and reverence within India and around the cricketing world, that moment will be remembered forever, like that'll be the moment of, of this World Cup final. Yeah, yeah, I feel like um, he, he could had he re, had he thought he was in jeopardy with not being able to catch it. He had enough time to knock it back, so I don't think it was ever really going. Like he got into a really good position, but I mean, yeah. I'm not diminishing it at all. It, it's a it's an extraordinary World Cup winning, winning moment, and often you see it with a piece of fielding, right? And India are worthy winners, and they're worthy winners on so many fronts. But that piece of fielding was the perfect full stop on it. Um, I love those yep. Indian fans. I don't know whether you picked this up on your monitor, Jeff, but there are probably ten Indian fans sat right in front of Jay Shah. So whenever Jay Shah um, flashed up on screen, which was you know fairly regularly, uh, they would um, they would jump up in front of him to make sure they were seen. So I thought that was good game awareness for some India fans, knowing that. Um, the camera was going to be on the real boss um, quite a bit throughout the course of the 40 overs. And just a little commentary one, Jeff, a little bit of an inside baseball thing from me. So Ian Bishop was calling overs 11 through 15. So he was the lead commentator in the third slot and he was replaced in the fourth slot by Ian Smith and Ravi Shastri who took it home. But Bish would have known that that was his last moment on air for the day. And in the last ball of the 15th over, it was one of those ridiculous sixes from Classen. And he delivers this word perfect line about the rainbow nation and the pot of gold at the end at last. And it was such a beautiful mm -hmm. line. That's the line that Bish would have delivered had South Africa won the final yeah. and he'd been calling. And like any good yep. commentator, you've got the line and you've got a chance to use it, you should. And he used it there <laughs> and he was right to use it there. Um, little did he know that it'd be the last time that they would truly um, be winning the final. And, and that's it for me in terms of Hall of Fame for Westfield London. Westfield Stratford City, more extra, less ordinary. And as a consequence, uh, that'll be our daily shows as well. There'll be a wrap-up show tomorrow. There'll be any number of shows where we talk about this final through the week, I suspect. But in terms of pure game shows, this is it. We've made 40 yep. of them through the course of the tournament, Jeff. Um, list Christ. of thank yous. Alex Patterson, who's made all of the clips which have gone out um, across our social media channels. Nick Tooby, who's kept a, a control of things behind the scenes here in London as well. All of our patrons for their enduring support of what we do. All of the people who comment on YouTube. I know we get a bit robust in the comments, but we have to. That's the way these things work uh, on social media. People who reply and share what we put up as well. 
It's all appreciated and not least the people who support the show on Patreon. You can do that too. Patreon.com forward slash the final word. Um, be with us, not just through tournaments, not just when we're making daily shows, but um, throughout the year because we make about 250 eps across it. Mm-hmm. We can't stop and we won't stop. Uh, also, thanks to all our co-hosts through the tournament, uh, Daniel Norcross, Barad Sundarason, Cameron Ponsonby, Stephen Finn, uh, Ben Jones was there, we had Rory Dollard, uh, we had uh, Matt Roller, and I think that was about, we had Henry Moran, and uh, Henry Moran, that's it. Yep. I think that's all I've got on my on my list at the moment, <laughs> but... Um, uh, that we, we could literally could not have done it without the help from everybody else pitching yeah. in given that it was half the games were in the middle of the night for you and uh, half of them were in the middle of the night for me by the time they were fucking over but mm. uh, look, we've made it we're, we're through we're at the <laughs> other end it was a team effort thank you everybody for listening this has been the final word World Cup Daily 2024 for Westfield India at last their world champions good night from us see ya <laughs>